The United States men's national team player pool is always one of the most fun and controversial things to talk about. So in today's video, we're going to be doing our depth chart for the USMNT. We're going to be going four players deep in each position across all the 11 positions in Greg's 4-3-3. Just a couple quick rules. We're only going to be doing players and their position to play for the national team, not what they could play. And this is my depth chart mixed in with a little bit of reality of the player pool and what Greg will do. But anyway, we're going to get straight into this video. If you have not already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It will be greatly appreciated, but let's go. Okay, so beginning with goalkeeper last year, first up we had Zach Steffen, followed by Ethan Horvath, Matt Turner, Brad Guzan, and Sean Johnson in our depth charts. I think going into qualifying last year, Zach Steffen was pretty clearly number one, and I thought everyone kind of knew he was going to be the start of that World Cup qualifying. And then you had Turner, you know, Horvath are guys who could have came and potentially been replacements if called upon. But moving on to 2022, this is my depth chart. I think Matt Turner is currently the number one. Zach Steffen has had not a great track record of playing over the past year. And I don't think he's progressed a lot in particular. He's very shaky coming out of his box. Distribution isn't great. I think he's a little slow to react sometimes. So for that reason, I think Matt Turner is the best shot stop we have to put on the field. Uh, Zach Steffen is at my number two. I think he's... He's still all right, but he's, I don't know. Like, I just think Matt Turner has to be the number one. Ethan Horvath uh, is playing more regularly now with Luton Town because he didn't really play a lot last year uh, with Nottingham Forest. Then I have Sean Johnson uh, capped at four. But if I were to guess, I think Matt Turner, Zach Steffen, and Ethan Horvath would be the three goalkeepers that we would take to Qatar. So moving on to left back last year, we had Anthony Robinson at number one going in qualifying. That was pretty obvious. Sam Vines at two, Bello at three, and then Paredes and Jonathan Gomez at four and five. Looking back on it now, I think the first three made sense. Uh, those three guys competing for those left-back spots is Robinson, Bello, and Vines. And then Kevin Paredes and Jonathan Gomez, uh, they were kind of in the pipeline playing well. But Jonathan Gomez with Louisville City and Kevin Paredes with DC United before he moved to Wolfsburg. Uh, moving on to this year, I think we've had a little bit of progression in the left-back pool. Well, not a whole lot. Uh, Anthony Robinson is still the number one, pretty obvious. If he's healthy, he's going to be playing all 90 minutes in every single game in Qatar. I have Joe Scali at two. I think Greg is pretty reluctant to bring him as a right back, and he has three or four other options ahead of him. So I think if Joe Skelly were to get on a roster, even the playing to guitar, he's going to have to be, be at left back. I'm not a huge fan of him and Dest uh, at left back in particular. I just don't think there's a lot of good when they cut on their inside, and then you obviously have Pulisic on his left. He cuts inside a lot, so I, just don't, I don't think it's very balancing to have a right-footed outside back at left back. Uh, I have Dewan Jones at three. I haven't really impressed him throughout MLS this season. I think he's, he really fits a system, a left-footed player, uh, more technical than you think he is. He's pretty quick, very athletic, just like Jedi, and he has a really good profile getting forward. I think he has some really good uh, crosses and entry balls, so I want to see Dewan Jones get a cap, although I just don't think it's, it's going to happen before the World Cup. Um, and then I have George Bello at four. I think he's a little bit better than Sam Vines, not a lot. I think he could really uh, pick or choose between Bello and Vines. It doesn't really matter, but those are my four left-backs, I think, heading into the World Cup. And it wouldn't really surprise me if Jedi Robinson were the only true left back to make the World Cup roster. All right, moving on to our center backs. So last year, I think I did 10 center backs, and I'm only doing four per position this year. But I think the bottom five center backs last year uh, had Mott Miazga, Walker Zimmerman, Cameron Carter Vickers, Eric Palmer Brown, and Sam Ream. I think looking back on it, I think all those guys, they were in contention, but some of these guys hadn't got a lot of caps, in particular Eric Palmer Brown, Cameron Carter Vickers, and Walker Zimmerman before the World Cup. Sam Ream was still in the pool, and Mott Miazga. Uh, he was playing a lot last before his move uh, to La Liga, and then he just kind of stopped playing. But now he's back in Cincinnati, but not really in the national team pool. But now I have Aaron Long at 8, Mark McKenzie at 7, Eric Palmer Brown at 6, and Cameron Carter Vickers at 5. Not a huge fan of Aaron Long. I don't think he offers a lot, especially in the distribution phase. Mark McKenzie, a uh, talented player, just hasn't really had a lot of game time and hasn't really made a lot of progressions. Just not really consistent over his past year and a half with Genk. Eric Palmer Brown playing for Trois in Ligue 1. Uh, he's been all right. A little bit inconsistent. I really like his profile. Uh, pretty good at the ball to the back. Can play as a six if he needs to or anywhere across the back three. So, uh, But I w it wasn't very impressive when I saw him in June against Uruguay in the half he got. I have Carter Vickers at five. I thought he was pretty good in the June window. And obviously he's been playing very well for Celtic. So those are my four center backs. And I think one or two of these guys will sneak on to the playing in Qatar. All right, moving on to our top five center backs of 2021 and top four uh, currently. I guess last year I had John Brooks, Chris Richards, Miles Robinson, Mark McKenzie, and Aaron Long. I think those were the five guys that we expected Berhalter 
uh, to kind of ride or die with throughout World Cup qualifying. Aaron Long obviously got hurt. John Brooks got exiled for whatever reason. And then Chris Richards and Miles Robinson, they did a lot of heavy lifting and qualifying. And then Mark McKenzie as well. He played a lot in the Nations League. And then obviously had Walker Zimmerman kind of come out of nowhere. But these are my four center backs as the moment. So I think Chris Richards is still our best center back at the moment. Right up there with Walker Zimmerman. You can really flip flop him. It doesn't really matter to me. I think Richards is the most well-rounded center back we have. I've said that many times. Very comfortable with the ball at his feet. Is very dominant in the air. I think he's going to be a huge uh, part of the success. We're going to have Qatar. I think he's a very well Rounded center back and needs to play some minutes for Crystal Palace. Walker Zimmerman may not be the best player, but when he's put on the national team shirt, he's been very effective and very good, in my opinion. Dominant in the air, I think his distribution is a lot better than advertised. He's had a lot of really good switches uh, throughout qualifying. I think he's really opened up the field with some of his passing and it's just gotten a lot better over the past year or two. I have Robinson at three, would have been on the World Cup, World Cup roster had he not gotten hurt. That's just really a shame. I thought him and Zimmerman paired really well together. They each kind of cover up for each other's weaknesses. So that's a super huge bummer. I have John Brooks at four. I think it's pretty obvious he's going to be, he's not going to make, you know, the trip to Qatar. I think he's still a very talented center back. I hope he finds a place uh, before this Thursday, before the transfer deadline ends. But I think those are the four best center backs that we have. But if I were to guess, I think it'd be Chris Richards, uh, Walker Zimmerman, Cameron Carter, Vickers, and Aaron Long that make the play into Qatar. All right, moving on to right back. Last year we had Sergio Dest at number one. That was pretty obvious. Reggie Cannon at two. Shaq Moore at 3, Yellen at 4, and Brian Reynolds at 5. I think they're pretty good picks from the last year. Not a lot has changed. So Gino Dest is still the number 1. Reggie Cannon, Shaq Moore, Yedlin, kind of on the same boat. I don't really have one in particular of you super higher than the others. Then Brian Reynolds, I thought I saw a very talented player in him last year. Got a March call up in 2021. Looked pretty good. Played some minutes here and there with Roma, but just hasn't really been able to find a stable club and play a lot. But now my four right backs... I have Sergino Dest at 1, Shaq Moore at 2, Reggie Cannon at 3, and DeAndre Yedlin at 4. Sergino Dest, pretty obvious. His problem is he's not going to play a lot with Barcelona uh, before the World Cup, so that's a little bit concerning, but he's still a really good player. I have Shaq Moore at 2. I just think he offers more going forward than both Reggie Cannon and DeAndre Yedlin, and his defensive liabilities are just, they're about the same as both Cannon and Yedlin, so I put Shaq Moore at 2. I just think he's a better uh, fit for Berhalter. I have Cannon at three. He has the ability to, you know, tuck in in the back three, or he can play as a right back. I'm not really super impressed with his positioning at times. Very, you know, not great going forward either. And I have Yedlin at four. I'm not a huge fan of Yedlin, but I think he's going to make the World Cup roster. But if I had to guess, I think three of these guys might play into guitar, and it'd be Reggie Cannon, DeAndre Yedlin, and Sergio Dest. Okay, so moving on to the six last year, we had Tyler Adams at one. Kona Costa at 2, James Sands at 3, and then Leon a flag and on out to start routing out 4 and 5. I think pretty obvious Tyler Adams is going to be kind of the guy to play all the minutes work of qualifying 2021. Uh, Kellen Acosta again came off a really good gold cup. James Sands again, pretty good gold cup for him as well. And Leon flag and on out to salary kind of just spot fillers. They were playing, or Flock at least was playing enough for Philly. And off to salary was still kind of a guy I think a lot of people still had a lot of expectations and potential for. But moving on to this year in current time, Tyler Adams is still the number one. He's still very important to this team. I think he didn't have a great club season last year for Aubrey Leipzig, but ever since his move to Leeds, he's just seemed like a whole nother player. Really been able to play in his element, play to a lot of his strengths under Jesse Marr. So glad to see Tyler Adams back because we're going to need a healthy and effective Tyler Adams and Qatar. Kona Cost, I have it too. I think he's a good guy to have at backup. I think he's better than a lot of, than advertised by a lot of national team fans. Uh, very good in uh, defensive transition, I think. He's pretty comfortable with the ball on his feet. I think his, if you give him time and space, he can really pick out a dangerous pass. Obviously, he's not a starter, but he's a good player to have. He's always can play as an outside back or even as emergency eight if you need him to and pretty good on set pieces. James Sands, I have a three, a guy who's kind of a hybrid center back CDM role. It would not surprise me if he sneaks onto the Qatar roster as he's been playing a lot for Rangers as kind of in a back three. Uh, and then after that, it's, it's kind of a wasteland. There's just not any guys that are really even Nash team caliber at the six. You could maybe throw a guy like Musa or De La Torre here at the six in emergency, but I just don't think you're gonna get to the situation. So these are the only three real six that we really have in the pool for contention uh, as we speak. All right, moving on to our center mids, we're gonna do split them. I guess I had 10 last and eight this year. So you're gonna split them in half, five and four. Last year, I had Luke De La Torre, Buzio, Kendall Clark, Eric Williamson, and Roldan. I think all these guys were 
except for Clark and De La Torre. All these guys were in the provisional for the Gold Cup and had a lot of hype around them going into qualifying as we were kind of looking for options uh, to fill kind of the third and fourth eight behind Musa and McKinney. Uh, De La Torre came into qualifying later. Buzio had a good Gold Cup, uh, was there for a good chunk of qualifying. Kanan Clark, ever since his appendix injury, he's kind of fallen off, just wasn't really great for the U-20s and hasn't played a lot for uh, New York Red Bulls. Eric Williamson tore his ACL right before World Cup qualifying. That was a really big bummer. I really like Williamson's profile still, and Christian Roldan obviously was still in the pool, but I don't think I was super huge on him. But moving on now, I have uh, Roldan at 8. He's not as bad as I think a lot of people say. He's a good MLS player, but I just don't think he offers a lot uh, for the national team in particular. Eric Williamson, I have a 7. I think he's a really good profile. Had a pretty good Gold Cup a year and a half ago, and he's been playing a lot for Portland uh, recently, kind of recovering from the ACL. So that's really good to see. I think he's a really good profile, and particularly on the ball, and he's got really good set pieces and line-breaking passes. I don't think he's going to be even in contention for Qatar moving forward, but it would not surprise me if he were to get future call-ups uh, if he comes back to really full fitness for Portland. John Luca Buzio, I have a 6. He is stuck in Serie B with Venezia right now. I think he's a good, he has a really good profile. Is very technical. I think Greg likes him a lot, but I just don't think he's going to make a World Cup qualifying or a World Cup roster in Qatar as he's playing in Serie A or Serie B and just ha missed the June window as well. I don't think be, I don't see him being called this window either. And they have Georgi Mihailovic at five, the guy who can play a winger or as an eight. Has been pretty good with Montreal so far in the first half of the season, and then got injured right before the June camp, which he was supposed to be in. Uh, so those are what I have for my bottom tiers of the center mids position. Moving on to the upper half, last year we had uh, Weston McKinney, Reyna Musa, uh, Julian Green, and Sebastian the Jet rounding out our top five. Made a lot of sense at the time. I think there was a lot of advertisement for Reyna to be played as an eight, and understandably so. Julian Green uh, had just really had a really good two Bundesliga season and just gotten promoted to the Bundesliga, so I think a lot of people wanted to see him. And then Sebastian the Jet was still kind of in the pool. Not a lot of people were high on him, but I think he was still you know, playing well enough to be called up uh, for the national team. But moving on to what I have now, I have obviously McKinney and Musa at 1 and 2. If they're healthy, they're going to be starting at night. Well, if they're healthy, they're going to be playing large chunks in Qatar, uh, particularly Weston McKinney. I have Luka De La Torre at the 3. I don't think he's going to start any games in Qatar or moving forward, but I think he's a really good, you know, second option to have if one of these guys is injured. Just super comfortable with the ball at his feet. I think since his inclusion, uh, in the January camp, he's been able to really play and express himself. I think his profile is just so good and kind of goes under the radar at times. So we're really lucky to have a guy like Luke Latore as one of our depth options. And then at the four, we don't really have a fourth eight. So I think the first three, like I mentioned, McKinney, Musa, and De La Torre, if they're healthy, they're going to be playing uh, just depending on who's available. But if none, if two of these guys aren't available, I think Berhalter would probably slide either McKinney and Musa as a kind of deeper almost as a double pivot next to Tyler Adams, and then play one of Aronson, Reyna, or Tillman as a 10. I think that's just kind of the emergency option. I guess you could also throw him a high limit in there as well. But I think those are the top four options we have at center mid. I would like to see Gio Reyna played as a center mid, uh, as a box-to-box. -box. I think he could do it. May not be the best, especially in uh, defensive transition uh, or even the pressing phase of Baralter's system, but I just think Maybe good at least to try before the World Cup, but I think before going to the World Cup, these are the three options that we have, and then an emergency fourth, uh, just depending on how things shape out. All right, so on the left last year, we had Pulisic at one, Aronson at two, Conrad at three, Giannis at four, and Ledesma at five. I think going to qualifying, we expected Pulisic and Aronson to be the main guys on the left. Uh, Conrad got off to a really hot start uh, back in August uh, at the beginning of League 2, and he got a call up to the September camp in 2021. But then kind of just things didn't work out and it kind of fell apart. I don't really know what I was doing with Yanez and Ledesma, to be quite honest. I think they might have been better guys should have put there a year ago. But moving on to now, have Pulisic at 1, obviously, and then I have Aronson at 2. Aronson is making a case to, you know, maybe potentially playing at 10 if we want to do that. But, you know, as of right now, he's probably a backup winger to Christian Pulisic. Then I have Malik Tillman at 3. Again, could also play one of those 10 roles if we do decide to play with a double pivot. And then 4, I have Conor De La Fuente. I just think he has a really good profile. Uh, super tricky. His dribbling is really good. His main thing is he just cannot find a way to get on the field consistently in Europe. I don't know what's not clicking. Like, he has all the tools. Just something needs to click sooner than later. I believe in his talent, but again, as of right now, he's not really anywhere close uh, to being in the national team picture. But that's what I have for the left wing. Obviously, Pulisic and Harrison, uh, they're both going to be in Qatar, and then I think Malik Tillman will be as well. 
just depending if some of these guys would go as midfielders or as wingers. Moving on to the right last year, at number one, we had Simwea, uh, followed by Jordan Morris, Paul Ariola, Cade Cowell, and Nico Giacchini. I would have had Giorena at one had I have not put him at center mid last year. But this was before Simwea really broke out qualifying, so I was pretty, pretty happy with this pick. Uh, Morris, again, was still uh, suffering from the ACL injury, but he was still his stock for the national team. I felt were still pretty high. Uh, Paul Ariola at three, Cade Cowell at four. I don't really know what I was doing there. And same with Nico Giacchini at five. I don't really think right now we have a lot of winger depth. Sure, we have some really good wingers, but after the first five or six, it's just it just kind of falls downhill. Not really a lot of great options. So moving on to now, one, obviously I have Gio Reyna. If he is healthy, he's going to be starting in Qatar. He is just, he's just that guy, man. He just, he makes soccer just look so simple in so many ways. He's still 19 years old. It's crazy to think how good he is. I have Timmy Weya too. I think... If we were to play Rain in the midfield, Tim Weya has to start the way he's played for us. He just brings a completely different element. He's really, he's very vertical and just he's able to stretch the field with his runs in behind. A very smart soccer player. I think Tim Weya is one of the most underrated players for this entire team. At three, I have Morris just above Paul Ariola because I just think Morris for the national team offers a little bit more than Paul Ariola does. A little bit better off the ball, but again, better in the air. Now, I'm not saying I would make him a late sub. But if I had to choose, I would probably take Jordan Morris over Paul Ariola. So I do think three of these guys can get on the plank to car. Potentially four. We'll see if Paul Ariola and both Jordan Morris make it. But this is what I have for right wing. And moving on to striker. Last year I had Sargent at one. Hoppy at two. Daryl DK at three. And then PFOC and Zardes at five. I think at the time it was pretty pretty clear Josh Sargent was the number one. Had just made that move to Norwich. Matthew Hoppy, I think a lot of people were really excited for him. Uh, going from Schalke to Mallorca. But things just didn't work out for him. Daryl DK uh, was really good in the Gold Cup as well when he was healthy. I think there was a lot of hype around him. And he was going to have some involvement in qualifying. But he never did. Uh, Jordan P. Falk, he was scoring a lot of goals. But I don't think a lot of people were too too high on him. Because he just didn't really play super well when he got his opportunities back in 2021. And then we didn't have many other guys. So I think I put Zardes at 5. But I think he's completely out of the picture at the moment. But now, I still have Josh Sargent at number 1. Yes, he's been scoring lately, but that is not my sole reason. I've always liked Josh Sargent, uh, but he was in pretty poor form for a majority of the beginning of 2022, and it wasn't great towards the end of 2021 either. But I really believe in what he offers. I think he's a very well-rounded player, and I just think he's a better fit than most of the guys to plug in at the 9. Good off the ball, very good in the air, very physical. Occupies center backs, makes really good runs in the channel uh, and into that back line. I just think Josh Sargent is a guy... He's starting to score goals in the championship, which is a pretty good league. It's better than MLS. I just think Sargent's profile just fits the U.S. super well, and I want to see him in the September camp upcoming. Two, I have Jordan Pifok. Again, I think he's a good player. I think it's kind of tough because he's great, but I don't think he really fits the mold that we need to play for the national team. He's not great in transition. He doesn't really press a whole lot. It's hold the play. It's all right, but he does score a lot of goals. So I think if we were to uh, continue to have him be in the national team, he's kind of a guy... If you're either going against a super low block or you need him to be a late sub and start pumping in crosses, be a disruptive force in the box, I think Jordan P. Falk is your guy there. At three, I have Jesus Ferreira. This is kind of tough on Ferreira because he's been phenomenal MLS so far this season. I think he has a good profile, but I just don't think he's a number nine. He's oh, he's pretty good moving off the ball, but I don't think he offers a lot uh, in particular with his holdup. I think a lot of times he's muscled off the ball, uh, but we'll see. I think Sergeant P. Falk and Ferreira. I think will be the three guys, at least in September, and probably the World Cup. At four, I have Ricardo Pepe. I still believe in Pepe a lot. I think his profile is really good. He's just hit a point in his young career where things just aren't really clicking for him. The move from Dallas to Augsburg just didn't really help him. Um, it's, it's a really tough job to make for a young player. I really hope he gets back sooner than later because I think he does have a really good uh, profile. and He did pretty well for us in World Cup qualifying. So that, that just doesn't count for nothing because we know he's played well in a Peralta. So he's clearly got some talent to at least contribute to the national team, but hopefully he can find um, a better situation for himself. So anyway, guys, that's it for this video. That's what I have. I'm going to cut that, actually. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. Make sure to leave comments down below. Let me know what you think of some of these positions in the depth charts and what you would change. Super excited with some big fixtures coming up for the U.S. in September. Going to be doing a lot more on this channel. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. And I thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.